It's January 2024, and the newest version of Home Assistant has been released. It primarily focuses on updates to the automation UI to make them more streamlined and better and easier to use. And there are a couple other things to look at as well. Uh, so let's get started. All right, so let's start off by talking about the screen here. This used to start off, if you had no automations, it would start off with a blank screen. It wasn't very helpful for you. So what they've done is they've added this little start automating dialogue that talks about um, what automations and do and how you get started. And then you can click on this learn more. This takes you into the automation editor and gives you all the details about how to actually use an automation. Since automations to me are the heartbeat or the home or the, uh, the, the main purpose of having a smart home, you need to have this automation stuff easy to use by someone who's never used Home Assistant before. And in this release, Home Assistant team has done a great job in making that more user-friendly. Okay, so you have this screen here and you learned about how to do an automation. So let's just go ahead and go through creating a quick automation. So you just click the Create Automation button. And we'll talk about some of the stuff here that has changed. So obviously you have a, def a number of different ways to create these automations. A new one, uh, conversation, agent, agenda, notification. Uh, uh, these are just blueprints that I've had installed um, before. So this is what we're going to start with, creating a new automation. And you'll see here a whole bunch of new stuff here. This is stuff that tells you what each section does. In the past, what it used to do was tell you um, just add trigger with no explanation uh, and then conditions and whatnot. And they've also done a couple other things we'll talk about in a minute. And then each one of these, of course, has a little help thing here. Um, anyway, you've got stuff in here and it tells you how all this stuff works. So each section has a little bit of a help to get to um, if you are stuck. So let's go ahead and add a trigger. And this is going to be, I'll just use time and location such as the sun, when the sun, sun uh, sunset, and you can add an offset. This video isn't about creating automations that do specific things. It's about the UI and the improvements there. So we're just going to go through this quickly. Then you have an and if condition. This list of condition needs to be satisfied for the automation to run. It can be uh, satisfied or not at any given time. So if Chris is home, you can use building blocks to create more complex automations. So first you would add a condition here if you wanted to. So we would say, uh, if an entity is in a specific state, that's the one I'll choose. We'll choose either a numeric state or a state. And then we'll choose the entity. Which game room lamp? We'll use that one. And then the state will be if the state is already off. Now conditions are optional. This and if section is optional. You don't have to do anything in this section. I'm just highlighting the changes that they've they've put into this. So this is basically a very simple thing. I would say if at sunset, right at sunset, if the game room lamp is off, then I come down here and I add an action. Now the differences in the actions are that they've created unify actions or unified actions. It used to say call service uh, and that's changed now to be more of a unified action. So let's say you want to do something on a device uh, and then there's all these other things you can do as well. Uh, so I'm going to say do something to a device. If it's already off, I want to um, turn it on. So the game room lamp, if it's on or off, then I want to turn on or off the game room lamp. And here's all the things that you can do to that. You can turn it on, toggle it, turn it off, because it's based on the type of item it is. It's a switch, and so you can either, uh, under the action, turn it off, turn it on, toggle it. Um, and I've got a couple of different things here. So we'll just leave it as turn on game room lamp. That's a simple automation, and that's what, what has changed with the automation UI. If you need your automation to be a little more complex or to be a little more specific about things, you can add building blocks. This is a new thing that's been added in the UI, and it tells you what these are. Everything that you click on now in the automation gives you some helpful uh, information. So this one, in this case, for building blocks, you have and, not, or, or. And so if, obviously, and, test if multiple conditions are true, not test if a condition is not true, and or test if any condition is true. So if you have, if you want two or three things to be true, then you would test an or. So, uh, and for example, an added condition. 
So I would add a condition here, um, device, game room lamp is off. And then since this is an and, and you can see by this symbol here, that's an and, and um, the time and location. So we would say the time is after uh, seven, say seven o'clock a.m. on weekdays. So now the way this works is, and you don't really need this first one for any of this, but when, this, when the sun sets, this is just a really strange automation. I wouldn't build this normally, but I'm just showing you the UI. When the sun sets uh, and the game room lamp is off, uh, then we check it again. So let's just get rid of this. So now we have an and if, so this is a building block. So if the game room lamp is off and it is after 7 a.m., then do this thing right here. So the, the point of this is that they've created a number of different uh, improvements to the UI to help you understand what you're supposed to do at each step of the automation. And that was, that's what makes the automation in this version of Home Assistant much easier to use. And one thing I want to point out here that I didn't point out under actions, conditions, triggers, when you create an action or you add an action, let's go back to game room lamp. What it's going to do under these actions, it's going to show you the most used by the community. It'll, in, um, it'll put those in order here. So all of these things show up as um, things that are more popular type of actions. So if you're building an automation, and you're not sure which thing to do, the suggestions are gonna be the most common, most popular ones. That also is another way to help you understand how to do the automation. One other thing to point out about actions, and I remove this to show you again, if you click on add actions, this is searchable. There are a bunch of actions in here that you can do. You can do something with a device, you can do something with the alarm control panel, uh, calendars, uh, all kinds of things here. So if you wanted to, it's way at the bottom here, let's say, to-do list. If you want to do something with a to-do list, you can do um, a search and then you can see all the actions related to a to-do list. So add to-do list item, update, uh, remove, etc. So you have all these options available to you now under the add action and it's searchable, which is a very big improvement as well. So in a nutshell, the, um, the automation UI has been improved greatly. It flows better. There's help along the way as you're creating the automation so you know what to do at each step. And as you get better and better at creating automations, uh, you can dig into those building blocks, create the logic for and, or, um, and, and not or. You can create all those and build really complex automations as you get better into doing that. But getting started, this is a good uh, improvement for the UI to help you and those especially that are new to the automations build out those automations. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about are to-do lists. There's been some improvements to the to-do lists. If you don't have to-do lists over here on the sidebar, you need to go down to your uh, settings and then your integrations and then on um, this button over here, the add integration, you'll go over here and search for to-do and you want to add local to-do. And this adds a local to-do list to your thing. Now you can add multiple to-do lists. Uh, to your uh, setup. So you would come back here and add additional ones. So right now I have to-do lists. And now that I have added that second one, I actually have two of them over here. Uh, you can make one for groceries, one for chores, like I've done. I showed a video on this in the past, um, release notes because they had updated this before. What's changed though, is the ability to add um, dates or add uh, due dates on these. Now, if I add an item, if I add an item to this to-do list, say new item, then if you click on this, you'll have a dialog to add a description. So new item description, and then you'll have a due date option here. So we could put it on the 27th, that's way out at 7 a.m. or whatever, 12 a.m. 7 a.m. here, and then you save the item and you get this showing up in three weeks or whatever it is. And then you just use it like any other uh, to do once it's done, you mark it off. And then you can also come over here and do the same thing. If you click on add item here, the task name would be newest item. 
item. And you can put a description and you can put in here this. Okay. Uh, we could do 8 a.m. Add the item. And there it is, right? So you just uh, are have the ability now to look to add these due dates to your to-do items. And then you would check them off just like you do any other type of thing. And one thing to notice too is I can't uncheck it, can I? Oh yeah, there we go. So I can put it back on the list by unchecking it. But one thing also to notice is this has been cleaned up a little bit. This also supports Markdown. So if you wanted to uh, bold this, I think this is Markdown for bold. Let's see. Uh, maybe not. I need to study my Markdown. I don't know, but it does support Markdown. Um, uh, and then you can uh, you can format it. It cleans it up, makes it look nice and everything else. Um, so you can add links, bold text, and due date, due date time are supported. Now you can also probably add an item here that is just the due date without a time. I bet it defaults to midnight though. Let's just pick a random date here. Okay, save the item. Um, whatever. You typically would put a time on it probably anyway, or it's going to default to midnight. And as I mentioned, this is all cleaned up now. It's a better view. It looks nicer. And so some of that tweaking has been done there as well. So there, there you have it on the to-do list. They've added that. I just want to mention too, um, this is not a huge release. This, this uh, is uh, folks coming off of holiday. So there wasn't a lot of time spent doing that. And that's understandable. Uh, but these are some pretty significant improvements, especially the automation piece. That, that one's going to go a long way to help people to build those automations. These are other nice to haves. And one other thing I'm gonna talk about is the, uh, the thermostat card. The thermostat card is a card, or the card has had an update on it as well. So if I edit this dashboard, I'll just throw a thermostat card on here. When you create a thermostat card now, you have the option to uh, show the current temperature as the primary information instead of the set point. Right now, this is the This is the temperature and this is the set point. So now this is the set point and this is the temperature. So you can flip these now in the card. So if you want to see the temperature is big and the set point down here is minimized, then you can do that. You also have the ability now to add climate fan modes as an option on the features. Before you had HVAC modes, preset modes. Now you have this climate uh, or this fan mode and you can select that. So either in my case I have an eco B and I can select on or auto. So that's an option that has been added to the thermostat card to make it just a little bit better. Um, so your choice here, whether you want to have the temperature shown or the set point shown, uh, and then you can add this fan mode as, all, as well to the thermostat card. All right. So that's the thermostat card. Easy peasy there. And then one other thing to talk about here is, or a couple more things to talk about on the home assistant blog. I don't have any valves, but they've added a brand new entity type called a valve. So you can use these to expose valves, such as a valve on a radiator, pool, sprinkler system, and main house, gas, or water line. I'm not sure where these things are available, but I they're not available around here to see stuff like this. And I don't have radiators. I guess you could do something with a pool. It'd be interesting to see how people use this because um, I'd love to be able to turn a valve on and off if I needed to in an emergency, especially through automation, if one of my water sensors detects it. I mean, there's ways to do that now in some of these devices that you can attach to your house. But this is a valve um, option. And I guess it even says here, the Shelly integration supports it and provides a valve entity for the valve add-on for Shelly gas. Um, support, support for it has also been added to MQTT and the valve entities also work with um, Amazon and Google stuff. Um, you have a switch entity that controls a valve. You can now change the entity type to valve in the entity settings. So if you're using a switch to turn things on or off on a valve, switch it over to valve and use this uh, instead. We talked about the thermostat. One other big thing down here. Um, well, let's talk about noteworthy changes. Uh, not a lot that I saw this time that affects anything that I'm running. Unless you're using an ESP home fan controller. 
you can add the preset modes to that. Uh, and there's some other stuff here. Uh, there's subwoofer crossover settings for the Sonos integration and all that. Uh, you can read through all this on their blog. New integrations, AO Smith for your water heater. I used to have one of those, but I never had any smarts on it. That's interesting. Uh, EV charger points. Uh, what else here? You can add holiday calendars to Home Assistant for powering automation. So if a holiday is coming up, you could set something to run um, a different automation on a, like say you're off on holidays or on a holiday, you can have the automation actually set up your house for when you're home rather than leaving to go to work on a holiday. That's an option. Uh, if you want to operate Tailwind smart garage door controllers, you can do that now. Um, and we talked about Valve. And then if you run Opower, man, I wish my provider would get on this. AEP Ohio and AEP Texas are both on that, along with all the rest of these. Um, so this O-Power is basically something where you can go in. It's an integration, and you can get all of your utility information uh, from this O-Power and see it in Home Assistant. And it's because, And it becomes part of energy as well. So all that's available in O-Power if, if your energy provider actually uh, is part of this and i see more and more of these added all the time so eventually it's going to get added uh, and then there's integrations from the ui now and then coming down here this is what i want to talk about i, I think this happened maybe the last release uh, but i didn't bring it up or i didn't even do a video on the last release backward incompatible changes these used to be called breaking changes and now they're called backward incompatible changes so in all my videos, I say, check the breaking changes. Now I'm going to say, check the backward incompatible changes. What that means this stuff isn't going to work. Uh, backward incompatible. Basically, it's a breaking change renamed. Um, so here's one. If you use the shutdown event, uh, the trigger platform is now using the string shutdown instead of an event object. Uh, I think that's an, actually an improvement because now there is actually a shutdown. Um, you can use shutdown again or use shutdown as an as an automation event. Uh, Modbus, Prusa Link, Real Link. If you're using these Real Link cameras, the infrared, infrared lights and night mode has been migrated from light to the switch domain. So be aware of that. And then Shelly, a lot of people use Shelly. There are minimum supported firmware versions um, to be able to use that. Shelly stuff, and here are the values for that in the uh, in the blog. Okay, well, I always think these are going to be short videos. This one should have been short because there's not much to it, uh, but I ramble. So I'm going to stop rambling there. So what we did, or what was released this month, basically the automation was the biggest thing, automation UI improvements. We had the thermostat card, uh, and then we had the to-do list event or the to-do list due date and time stuff added. So those are the three major things for this release in Home Assistant. Let me know if you have any questions down below. You can hit me up on Discord. Uh, and I really appreciate y'all watching. Um, I hope we have a great 2024 and I appreciate uh, all that y'all have done in the past uh, up to this point. So continue to watch, subscribe if you're not a subscriber and we'll see you on the next video.